Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom 5. In today's video, we'll be talking about the chemical properties of period 3 elements. We'll talk about their oxides and their chlorides. Let's go back to period 3. We know that these elements could react with oxygen to produce oxides. So they can provide oxides after reaction with oxygen, O2, and they can react with chlorine, Cl2, to produce chlorides. So we'll be talking about oxide formation and we'll be talking about chloride formation. But first we'll talk about their oxidation numbers. We know oxidation numbers could represent that whether they are gaining electrons when they react or they are losing electrons because that will help us in creating the formula of their oxides and their chlorides. Like sodium is plus 1, magnesium is plus 2, aluminium plus 3, silicon plus 4, phosphorus, sulfur and chlorine are minus 3, minus 2 and minus 1 respectively. Phosphorus also makes plus 3 and plus 5. Sulfur also makes plus 4, plus 6 oxidation states generally. While chlorine can make plus 1, plus 3, plus 5 and plus 7 oxidation states. And I would highly recommend you guys memorizing these oxidation states. These are the important oxidation numbers. These are the important oxidation numbers because even the chemical names of the compounds are involving the oxidation numbers in them. Coming back, using these oxidation numbers, we will try to figure out the chemical formula. So let's put lines between these so that we know that these are distinct oxidation numbers. Let me rearrange these, yes, and now for chlorine, yes, perfect. So we're gonna use these oxidation numbers for the chemical formula. For example, it's going to be Na2O, MgO, Al2O3. For silicon, it's going to be SiO2. Phosphorus is going to present two kind of different oxides. Using the plus three state, it can make P4O6, which is phosphorus three oxide and P4O10 which is phosphorus 5 oxide. We get SO2 and SO3 oxides using the two oxidation states of sulfur. Chlorine doesn't really react with oxygen. Let's recall the equations and try to figure out some specific observations. When sodium burns in oxygen, you can see a very bright yellow flame. So when you heat sodium in the presence of oxygen or air, what you're going to receive is sodium oxide. What you're going to observe is a bright yellow flame and the white powder of sodium oxide will be produced. So white solid is produced in bright yellow flame. When we talk about magnesium, so magnesium also burns in oxygen or air. What you're going to see is magnesium oxide is produced. Again, you're going to see a bright flame when it's burning. It's going to be bright white flame particularly. And what you're going to see apart from the flame is a vigorous reaction resulting in the formation of white solid of magnesium oxide. A white solid produced. Going back to aluminium. Aluminium itself is a silver gray metal. When aluminium burns in oxygen, you receive aluminium oxide, which is Al2O3. You will again see a bright flame here. So bright flame is your observation, bright white flame. And again, aluminium oxide is again a white solid. So you can write white powder, white solid. This is what you produce. It's a faster reaction. Powdered aluminium, especially if you have 
higher surface area it gives you a faster reaction compared to pieces of aluminium silicon plus O2 gives you silicon dioxide by the way SiO2 is the empirical formula because it's a giant covalent structure you will receive bright white sparks in this case so if you have a bigger piece of silicon especially you will receive really uh, intense sparks of flame over here and white powder of silicon dioxide will be produced this reaction happens when you heat it strongly and then you receive those sparks especially if you have a bigger piece of silicon going back to even more equations when phosphorus reacts with oxygen you receive phosphorus oxides you receive P4O10 which is known as phosphorus 5 oxide the 5 represents the oxidation state of the phosphorus element in the oxide you could also receive P4O6 which is phosphorus 3 oxide both of them are white powders the observation is white or yellow white flame and again white powder of phosphorus oxide is produced you can see those clouds of phosphorus oxide producing because it has um, a very brittle appearance when sulfur burns in oxygen sulfur is a yellow solid so when it burns in oxygen you get sulfur dioxide sulfur dioxide is a simple molecule with really toxic fumes so you would be able to tell that sulfur dioxide is indeed produced because of the toxic fumes and also you'll see blue flame so when sulfur burns in the presence of oxygen you will see blue flame and the toxic fumes of sulfur dioxide will be produced production of sulfur trioxide is not a really easy process if you remember O-level chemistry sulfur trioxide can be produced using the vanadium 5 oxide catalyst chlorine and argon give no reaction with oxygen recalling about the oxides we know sodium oxide MgO and aluminium oxide all three have giant ionic lattices because they have ionic bonding in them it's a 3d giant ionic lattice silicon dioxide is a giant covalent structure while phosphorus oxide sulfur oxides are simple molecules right now you can see the 3d structure of the silicon dioxide while p4o6 p4o10 have the structures represented here with SO2 and SO3 coming at the back so these are simple molecules let's label it giant ionic lattice for sodium magnesium and aluminium oxide giant covalent structure for silicon dioxide and all of the other oxides here on the screen are simple molecules with covalent bonding they could ask you that in normal theory questions let's talk about their behavior in water when sodium oxide is dissolved in water which is highly soluble you receive an alkaline solution containing sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas magnesium oxide is not really soluble in water when it dissolves in water sparingly you get magnesium hydroxide a cloudy solution and nothing else aluminium oxide and silicon dioxide could both be added to water and you could expect a reaction out of these but you will not because they are insoluble in water they don't dissolve in water they both will settle at the bottom phosphorus oxide gives you phosphoric 3 acid or phosphoric 5 acid when you talk about sulfur dioxide dissolving in water you receive H2SO3 which is sulfuric 4 acid and when you dissolve SO3 which is sulfur trioxide into water you receive H2SO4 which is sulfuric 6 acid talking about the pH of these solutions sodium hydroxide is highly alkaline with a pH of 11 magnesium hydroxide is pH 9 because it's not really soluble phosphoric acid is a strong acid so pH 2 
and all the other acids here like sulfuric 4 and sulfuric 6 acid also give pH 2. So let's keep it till here. In the next class, we'll be talking about period 3 chlorides. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks.